Hello everybody, today we're doing a video for GTA Car Kits in a 2019 Infinity Q50 and it will be the same installation for other Q series Infinities and today we're going to show you how to install our CarPlay module. As you can see it's paired to our iPhone wirelessly right now. It will also work with the Android phone for Android Auto and once you have it installed you will able to control the CarPlay with the original controls, also the steering wheel controls or you can control it with the original touchscreen. You will not lose any functions of uh, your original system and to go, to go back to it you're just going to press the back button and as you can see everything is the same way as before and if you press the back button you get an extra function which you didn't have before. So now we're going to go ahead and show you how to install it in this car. So the tools that you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver, panel removal tool and our hook tool and a drill for the last part of the install. So we're first going to start with our panel removal tool. I'm going to open the armrest. Here we're going to remove the two side panels and you can use your fingers and if the fingers are not enough you can use the panel removal tool to kind of get underneath and you have to pull it towards the back. It comes off, that's one side. Same on this side. Next we're going to remove the cup holders. We're going to use our fingers and if it's not enough again our panel removal tool to get underneath. So you work your way up. Here you have to tilt it and bring it out and there is a hook which when you're putting it back will go in first. Next we're going to lower the shift boot. Here is a clip for which we're going to use our hook tool. Make sure not to lose this clip and that holds the shift knob in place. Now we can remove the shift knob. Next we're going to remove two bolts. There's one on each side. So next we're going to put the car in neutral. We started the car, we have the foot on the brake. We're going to put it to neutral. We're going to remove this panel so again we're going to start from towards the back and work our way towards the front of the car and tilt the panel to the side and at this point you can put it back into park and turn off the car. Next we're going to remove the vents, again our panel removal tool, we're going to get underneath, work our way up, same on, on the driver's side. Next we're going to remove two bolts, one on each side and we're going to use again our Phillips. Next we're going to remove the bottom screen. So we're going to start from the bottom, tilt it and bring it down so there's three clips on top. Once we have the screen at the back there's three connections. You just press on the clips and disconnect them. Next we're going to remove the upper screen and it's held by two bolts, so the ones in the middle here. Again we're going to use our Phillips. We're going to grab it from the bottom and tilt it out. As you can see these are the one, the top brackets that have to go in first when you're going to be putting it back. On the back here there's two main connections. We're going to click on them and remove them. Below there is, depending on the, your particular car, you're going to have uh, these connections but you might have more, you might have less. But the same thing, they all have a clip which you press and remove them one by one. And now we're going to take the screen and show you how we're going to install a motherboard inside of it. So we have our screen removed, we're going to install this uh, motherboard inside and the video cable. The tools you'll need is a Phillips screwdriver and, if, and this type of hook tool. So first we're going to remove the side brackets on the side of the radio and they're held on just with Phillips. When you're putting it back, brackets are marked to left and the right. Left is closer to the driver. 
So we have to separate the back portion of the radio screen from the screen. And there are 12 bolts that hold it in place. So there's four here. And to get to one of them, you have to peel this corner. And then there's two on top, two at the bottom, and two on each side, as you see here. So we're going to start removing them. So next, we can separate the screen from this aluminum back. There is a bolt right inside, right in the middle, which you have to unscrew. Next, you can use your fingers, or if you have bigger fingers, you can use uh, our hook tool to help you. But I'm going to use my nails and fingers to remove these uh, video connections. So there's the first one here. You just flip it up and disconnect it. This one you have to pull on the plastic towards the top to release the clip. And then you can disconnect it. This one you have to lift up, the small one. Again, disconnect it. And here is another wire. Just pull it towards the top. Now the motherboard can come out. And this is the last connection that's holding in place. Just press on the clip and remove it. Now we're going to take our motherboard and put it inside. Put the motherboard under this metal clip. We're going to take our original connection and make sure that the clip is released and plug it into our motherboard. Once it's in, we're going to clip the white connection. Next is this big one. So you're going to release the clip and put it inside. Once it's in, I'm just going to clip it closed. Now we're going to take the original. And first, we're going to plug in this smaller connection on the side. Because it's once you install it, it's tough to get it in. But at this point, it's easy. You can clip it in. Over here, you got to make sure that this wire is coming out. And we're going to connect the smaller connection here. And you're going to line up the holes so it goes back in its original position. And all the holes line up, including this middle one. Once it's lined up, I'm going to press it down. And we can put the screw back. I'm going to plug this back in. It's the antenna. And our two video cables. So this is the big one. Once it's in its position, close the clip. Same with this one. And we'll close the clip back. When everything is plugged in, the last step is left is our video cable, which will come out and connect to our module. And you're going to plug it in into this connection right here. And you're going to make sure that uh, there's the flat end. And then there's the one that has the wires showing. The flat end has to be at the bottom. And at this point, the video cable is plugged in. I'm going to move it to, a little bit to the side. And next, we're going to close the radio with its original back. And here, be careful not to squeeze the wire or damage it. Once everything is in place, we're going to go ahead and put all the bolts back. So we've put in the, all the bolts around the stereo and at the back of the stereo. The last step is to put in and attach the brackets back onto the stereo. So at this point, the radio looks exactly as original, but you now have an extra cable for the video signal that will connect to our module. So our goal is to install back the screen and you're gonna have an extra wire, which we have to run behind the main radio portion. And we're gonna run it below and have it come here in the middle. And that's going to be one video cable, one harness for the module, and the microphone. So we're going to put the microphone there. But to do that, we have to remove this uh, center radio piece. And it's held on by four bolts. So there's two on top and two on the bottom. And we're going to remove them. Next, we're going to put the car in neutral. Make sure that the foot brake is on. And we're this time, we're going to use this release clip because we removed this panel. And it's 
easier to access it. That will give us the space to remove the main head unit uh, assembly. With your module you're gonna get the splitter cable and one end will plug in to the original connection here and this one will go into our upper screen. You're also gonna have this uh, harness for the module and this is one of the cables that we're gonna feed all the way down and have it come out here. So because this main unit is removed, we're gonna use the space to feed this cable down. We have our modified uh, original monitor. We have the video cable. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna feed this cable behind. That cable will also go and we'll have it come out in the middle of the car. We have to put them towards the corner where the driver is. As you can see, one is coming out here already. At this point, uh, we can start connecting everything back at the back of the original monitor. So. We have our splitter cable, which will go back into the original connection here. Before plugging in the big one, we're gonna plug in all the smaller ones and they're all color coded. You will not uh, plug them in into, wrong, uh, into the wrong one. So like I said, they're all color coded. Then there's the big connection, which you have to plug in. We're going to move the wires around and make sure that they're not in the way of anything. First we'll put in the top of the monitor and then clip it below and that portion is done. So now we have the monitor installed and we have two cables going down. So next we're going to install the microphone and in this particular car we're going to hide it here behind the driver's side vent because the owner doesn't want to see it and the microphone is only used for Siri or Google Assistant. For your Bluetooth phone calls, you're still going to be using the original microphone of the car. And we're going to zip tie it here. And again, same thing with this wire. We're going to feed it down and all the way to the center console. So first we'll feed the wire through. And then we're going to use the zip tie to attach it to one of the wires behind here. And we're going to trim the excess zip tie. Next we'll take the microphone wire and drop it again closer to the driver here. When you're putting this back you got to make sure that uh, these three wires are not hidden behind as you need to connect them back. And over here we have our wires. So this is the module wire. Here we have our microphone and we're carefully going to pull it through. And the last is our uh, video wire from the monitor. Again, don't pull on it too hard. When you're pulling it through, pull it gently. And our main goal is to have it in the center console. So once the wires have been hidden and uh, all the way in the center console, we can put uh, our bolts back so there's four bolts on top here and two at the bottom. Next we have to feed two wires to the center armrest and one of them is the auxiliary which will provide sound and we'll plug in here to the USB and also there's the USB for the wired portion of CarPlay or wired Android Auto. We're gonna take our drill and we're gonna make a hole over here closer to the driver. So when you're doing it make sure you take your time and choose the right spot. So with the hole drilled, we're first going to pull through our USB for the wired CarPlay option. And next is the auxiliary wire. So we're going to connect the auxiliary wire right away. With the kit you're going to get this uh, conversion cable, which will convert the auxiliary into the USB. And you'll plug it into the original USB here. Uh, we're going to close the console and we're going to start connecting everything into our module. So this is our module. So first you're going to attach the Wi-Fi antenna. Next we're going to take the auxiliary wire and on the harness uh, that we fed at the back there, 
there's an audio out option and that's where you're gonna plug it in and you can use a cable tie to make this wire neat because you don't need it that long we're gonna take uh, this end of the harness cable and plug it in to the module this is our video cable and you will plug it into the LCD out this is uh, the cable from the armrest we'll go to the USB portion here so you're gonna rearrange the cables so they're not in the way and we will tuck the module underneath uh, here you will make sure that uh, there's no wires in the way of anything so we will take our uh, bottom screen and we'll do the connections and connect everything back The top portion with the clips will go in first. Sort of clips in. And then you do the bottom. Now we'll put the two bolts back here. Next we'll put back the vents. You start from the top. And work your way down. Same with the driver's side. Start from the top. Next we'll put the center the trim piece back. We again move the lever to neutral so we can fit it back. So first you start with this edge and then work your way down. And once it lines up there should be no gap here and now you can put the two bolts back here. Now we can put the shift knob back. We lower it down. You have to put the clip back. Make sure it clicks and doesn't go up or down and then this uh, the shift boot you have to click it in next we're gonna put back the cup holders and as mentioned before this piece will go in first because it has that hook and next is the leather trim pieces on the side here so they have to be towards the back and then they will just slide forward and clip all together. Same with the passenger side. You have to line it up, all of them together and move it towards the front of the car. So now once we install everything, we're gonna test the system. So we connected our iPhone to the USB, which we showed you how to run into the center console. We're gonna turn on uh, the ignition. We're gonna go to the audio source. As you can see, the CarPlay already launched because we have connected our uh, iPhone. So next you're gonna test the sound. You're gonna go to the audio and you're gonna choose iPod. And in this car, it takes a while for the car to recognize that something has been plugged in. So it's nothing wrong with the system. It's just how the car behaves. Once the iPod is playing and you can hear sound playing on all your speakers, that makes, sure, that makes it uh, clear that everything is working fine. You can also t test the touch screen. As you can see, it's working. And you can also control CarPlay by using the original middle control. And if you wanna go back to the original system, you're gonna pause it. And if you hold the back button, it uh, switches back to the original system. So nothing's been lost. So once you tested everything, uh, the installation is complete. Again, this was a video for GTA Car Kids. I hope you liked it and we'll see you next time.